I've recently done a video on the best dividend ETF. I got loads of comments about one that I hadn't actually covered, and that was the one that you can see on the screen at the moment, the Fidelity US Quality Income Usage ETF, known by the ticker symbol of FUSI FUSI. I'm going to go and do a quick run through uh, some of the key characteristics of this ETF and in those key characteristics I'll be looking at things like the holdings, the performance, what kind of dividend it pays and as I always do that risk rating and I'll then pitch it against a couple of the ETFs that I'd covered in that previous video and actually two that I currently hold at the moment and give you my thought. Welcome back to the channel and if you're new here, hi, I'm Mark of Desperately Seeking Fi. I'm going to use just ETF as the tool to take you through the uh, FUC ETF and Basically, you come in justetf.com. I'll drop a link down below to it so that you can go and have a look at that. Let's have a quick look at some of the key characteristics of this. It is distributing ETF. So in other words, it is going to pay you income and this one pays quarterly. Um, so we'll figure out how much that is uh, towards the end of the video. Fund size is about 0.8 billion, so 809 million reasonable size and it has 118 holdings within the actual ETF and this is fully replicating. Let's just have a quick look at this screen and do a quick overview and figure out what this ETF is all about. It tracks the Fidelity US Quality Income Index and looking at that index looks at companies that are from the US that provide higher dividend yields. Total expense ratio for this is within my normal range. It's at 0.25% per year and it is actually the cheapest and largest ETF that tracks that uh, Fidelity US Quality Index. What I always like to say is it is a distributing, so in other words it pays out dividends and in this case it pays out its dividends quarterly. It's been around for about seven years now so at least we can see that it does have a bit of a track record and that's quite good because it allows us to look out that five-year time frame and see how it has actually performed. thing that I always tell people to go and do, go away, have a look at some of those key documents. So go and have a look at the uh, key investors information document and it's got lots of stuff in here so it'll tell you a little bit more about the ETF what its objectives are what the policy investment policy is it'll give you an idea of the risk or reward profile and if we look here this is basically just that synthetic risk to reward index and as with many of those ETF that I talk about, it's sitting in around that uh, risk rating of six. Let's go and have a quick look at the chart. Let's start off looking out at that five year period and you are seeing a nice steady trend to the upside, apart from obviously the blip that we have in around uh, March 2020 when we actually see COVID kicking in and dropping the market quite considerably. What's the last year look like? Nice steady growth, a couple of little dips here and there, but on the whole, nice progressive um, upside and looking over the last year being up about 19.38%. Last six months up almost 11, last three months up 6.63%. All in all, showing nice progressive upside on this ETF. Let's jump across and have a quick look and see which companies are actually held within this ETF. So the top 10 holdings you can see there, you have Apple, Microsoft, Nvidia, and surprisingly, they are some of the big Magnificent Seven that we are seeing really doing particularly well at the moment. So being weighted, you are looking at some of these companies having higher weighting. You're looking into the Eli Lilly's Procter & Gamble, um, Home Depot, etc. As we would expect, this is a US called the Income Index. So it is predominantly based within the, the US. 
with about 5% outside of there. And we are very heavily weighted towards that technology sector with almost 29%. But given where we are with things at the moment, most of the Magnificent Seven go on a particularly good run. That potentially would be something that you would be expecting to see. I quite like this little heat map. It sort of allows you to have a quick look and see how things have been doing just by quickly looking at the, the screen and seeing what things have been doing uh, and where are there particular months, are there particular trends that potentially you see this index doing well or not doing quite so well. October, September, potentially not as strong a month um, as we may have within November, which always seems to have been on the, the, the positive rise. Don't use this past performance uh, as an indication of anything that could potentially happen in the future. Do go away, do some due diligence and have a look at whether or not this kind of ETF is something that you're looking to invest into, whether it fits with your investing strategy and your aims and goals. Um, and don't forget, any money you do put in, there is a risk that you could lose some, if not all of it. If you're finding some value in this kind of content, I'd love it if you could drop a comment down below and smash that like button and give me a comment of some other ETFs that potentially you want me to go and have a quick look at and give you some of my thoughts on dividends. Um, suggesting currently about 2.11% dividend yield, lower than I would normally like to see if I was investing into individual stocks but I'm starting to do a slight transition away from looking for those higher dividend yields and looking at a bit more growth. And as we saw earlier, there has been quite a bit of growth in this ETF over the past five years. What we see in this chart is basically we have been seeing a a bit of an increase in the dividend being paid. Um, so you get to see from 2020, it was 13 pence, then up to 15 over 21 and 22, and then up to 16 in 23, and looking at potentially uh, 16 pence again this financial year. But we'll wait and see where that goes to. That is giving us about 2.11% on the current price that we have at the moment. To do a bit of a comparison, I've pulled in three different ETFs. Uh, two that I do hold, so I hold uh, the Vanguard S&P 500 ETF, so VUSA. I also hold the iShares UK dividend ETF. I hold those for slightly different reasons. The VUSA is to sort of track that US market, and with the IUKD, that is providing me with a higher dividend yield at the moment. But when we have a look at what has growth looked like over the past five years, it's pretty stark that the focus on the UK dividends is not seeing as huge a growth as those more focused on the US. And I explain a little bit about this in uh, the video that I've done recently on the FTSE 100. I'll mark up above and down in the comments. IUKD over the past five years has been up about 15%, so we're only looking at just under 3% growth per year on average. Adding in to that, you have your dividend. Trading212 have got this new feature, and for, definitely for the iShare ETFs, they have pulled out some more detail for IUKD. You are looking at a dividend yield of something in around that 6.28%. You also need to take away the expense ratio, which is for IUKD 0.4%. So you are looking at overall growth and dividend yield over the past five years has been looking at an average of something just under 9%. If we have a look at FUSI, it has grown almost 92%. That is just over 18% growth on average per year, which I would take every single day. But if we then have a quick look at S&P 500, we are looking at that at being actually over 20%. Uh, average growth uh, over that time period. Obviously, 
dividend yields are lower on both of those, but even if we are looking at there being literally no dividend growth, we are looking at those two providing somewhere in around 18 to 20% growth on average over the last five years. I will leave it up to you to decide which way you wish to go. Do you? And it may also all depend on whether you need an income or whether you are looking for growth. It all depends on what your investing horizon is, what your risk appetite is, and what your investing goals are. Everybody is different, so do go away, have a think about it. But it may be worthwhile going and having a look to see whether FUSI is something that you want to invest into, or if you're already investing into an S&P 500 tracker, is that enough for you and you don't need that added overlap. Thanks very much for watching and I will see you in the next one. Cheers, bye.